we're back with Matt Yule. Did Hi. I say that right? Yes. All right. He's at Built on Twitter. That's right. And you also spoke yesterday with Marcus. Yes, I did. Dragons, uh, craziness, yes. Dragons insanity. Were yes. Um, uh, what I actually thought about this because I know that you know people that might watch Strange Love might not be like you know completely full on nutty technical like you know a lot of people that showed half. up yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So um, what my analogy was for that was that uh, we take we take programming languages and we do the equivalent of use a screwdriver for a hammer. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you're not supposed to do that with tools, right? That's, that's a no-no. But uh, that's because tools don't change. With software, you know, everything can change. Everything is malleable. So um, what, what tends to happen is people, you know, use the screwdriver for a hammer. And uh, after a while, that works so well for them that other people start using it, and then that's normal. Mm-hmm. So that's also kind of crazy by this point, I guess. So, so what if you just have a Leatherman, and it can do anything? Is there uh, is there such a tool? Well, I think some people think of uh, certain languages as being like a Leatherman type of tool. I don't think we're quite there yet, though. So I, I asked this question once, and at the time that I asked it, I asked Ed Barowski, and I thought that it was a really stupid question, uh, but it turns out that it's a question that a lot of people ask. Why are there so many programming languages? Because there's so many programmers. And they each want to have <laughs> their own... Well, it's like just like uh, human languages. Or, you know, that sounds awfully geeky, but, you know, uh, 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 people have different dialects, they have different ways they want to express themselves, um, things that make more sense to them. So even people that, you know, might happen to speak English, if you speak English with someone that um, is from another country and they also grew up speaking English, they just, you know, the uh, you'll have a, a disconnect there. The and dialect. So, yeah, different. they're diverging. So you've got a lot of uh, programming languages. There's really just a couple of camps of languages mm-hmm. uh, where things have kind of diverged out from and they kind of recombine from time to time. But um, there's a lot of old ideas that get regurgitated, and then there's every now and then a new idea, and uh, it's just chaos. It's just randomness. So. All right, you describe yourself as self-underemployed. Yes. That's pretty much true. Um, I, I kind of walk that fine line of uh, uh, self-employed and uh, poverty. Mm-hmm. So. Um, uh, around the beginning of the year, that whole uh, self-employed thing kind of took a nosedive. So I've been kind of looking for like a job. Like, <gasps> a yeah, job? A job, you know. So I'm trying, actually, if I find a job that didn't have the, the quotes on it, mm-hmm. that would probably be better. But um, So if you found a job, it would be better, but you're looking for a job? Well, okay, I'm looking for a job. But, okay. you know, I, I probably you're afraid will you're find, a, find job, a job, and I'm hoping not to find a job. So that would be, that would be bad. Yeah, okay, yeah, job a make job or a job. But the make, make job has been considered from time to time. Yeah. You got to do what you can. Yes. It could, because, you know, Marcus left the country and you just let it all go to hell. So you know, we got to do something. Well, okay, I don't think it was firmly established whether he <laughs> left the country on his own accord. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. You know, uh, you know. What do you want to tell me about Buddy Walk? What okay. is Buddy Walk? Buddy Walk is, uh, it, I don't even know if it's been, anything's been decided about it this year, but it's an annual thing. Okay. Uh, it's for uh, Down Syndrome Awareness. Okay. Uh, my son has Down Syndrome, so that's like a cause for us. Uh, it happens generally like uh, late September, early October, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is around the time we start talking to people about it. Um, well, and what it is and what like the last one last year was uh, we got a couple hundred people at the Rose Quarter mm-hmm. and we walk around in a big circle and you know there's just, like t-shirts and uh, some people play music and there's you know snacks and that sort of thing. It's like a festival. But it's it's kind of a, a thing it's a couple hours and uh, you get to kind of get out in the community and uh, meet some actual people with Down Syndrome and uh, they're not like you know as weird as I think people tend to think uh, uh, and uh, it's, it's like an opportunity for kind of communities to, to come together. So. Is there a website for it? Uh, yeah, uh, although locally, uh, I think it's the NWDSA. It's, it's like nwdsa.org okay. is the, uh, the, the place you would go locally. Uh, there actually are, tend to be a couple of different buddy walks in the area around the same time. This is the one that's actually in Portland. Uh, last year we had one that was out on the, that wasn't us, but I uh, was out on the coast, and then there was another one that ended up uh, like bounces around, and it ended up being in Lake Oswego last year, which is um, anyway. Uh, uh, there's a Twitter account uh, that you can follow too. That's just at Buddy Walk, so okay. and you can get information about. And if Buddy people Walks. wanted to get involved, they can go to the website you mentioned, or at Buddy Walk would yep. lead them in the right direction. Yep. 
Okay. Definitely. And now I see Twimetry.com. Did I say that? Did I say it right? Yep. What is Twimetry? It's one of those dumb sites that uh, does metrics for your Twitter account. Oh. But uh, it's it's in uh, <laughs> super restricted alpha right now, so there's like three users on it. But if you want to so try it out, of you, the can, three users, you can DM me. Who's got the most Twimetry? Well, that that's just it. Uh, it started off, it's sort of like a, a project that I work on a little bit when I get the time, mm-hmm. and then I don't really have the time, which is kind of odd because you'd think, you know, being underemployed. Self-underemployed. Th- yeah, yeah. that that would not be an issue. But no, there's kids and you know whatever life, life happens yes yeah. exactly so um but the the underlying premise of, of toymetry is that um uh, you should be providing as much value on a social network as, as you're receiving right mm-hmm. so uh, i thought at first a good metric might be for you know if your number of followers and the number of people you follow are roughly close not that you're following in, and followed by the same people but if, if there's some kind of uh, there's symmetry a, there, a balance which is where the dumb toymetry name mm-hmm. comes from, because I like to If it has to do with Twitter, it has to have a twa uh, that it, do, it totally does, and I, I don't know. It was no one, one of those 2 a.m. domain related. name things, so. I got it unrelated, but do yeah. you have like a long list of, of domains that you own? No, I passed that phase. Actually, I used to own uh, like 16 domains, and about eight years ago, 16. I said, yeah, and I said, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to do that anymore. So slowly, oh, well, there's another one. I did, I did kind of a joke site la, uh, last year called uh-huh. researchfacts.com, and you can still go there. Uh, what CT it, or X? Oh, uh, facts, like CT. Like, okay. like, like these are true things. Yeah. The whole point is that they're not true. Yeah. So if you go to researchfacts.com, uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can kind of see the, the premise behind it. But the point of it is if you go on like a discussion board somewhere, you can uh, – assert that something is true that might not actually be true and if you put it in a link and if you follow the little rules that researchfacts.com requires Mm -hmm. then that link will direct over to researchfacts.com which has this legitimate sounding name and it will (laughs) present what you said as a fact so you can say things like abraham lincoln shot himself or that motor oil is good for fertilizer or (laughs) you know these sort of things and it appears true so and so anyway, every now and then I have a little, I guess that's kind of an arty type of project mm-hmm. that I do. So Toymetry is It's a fun diversion, and Toymetry is the same thing. And so you're basing, I always, all the different Twitter metrics all base themselves on different things. So this one is based on equality well, in your following versus it was, followers. But I figured out pretty quickly, in fact, about a week after I set this up, that that was wrong. Because mm-hmm. you get um, these... Uh, you know, I have so many naked it. women followers that I don't I do not. to do with them. And um, <laughs> all they want to do is have me go to their website and, and tell me that they love Actually, me. Actually, I guess I've had a couple of those, and uh, I go to their website and they want me to give them money. And like, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you really meant it, you'd just be you'd free, just, I guess. Yeah, they so love me. What yeah. I figured out was that there's sort of this, I guess I'd call it like a D-bag factor with people that are just like, I'm going to have like, you know, thousands of followers, and I don't really care who these people are. Mm-hmm. Right? And they end up getting an equal number of people that they're following and who follow them because they're going back through and they're mm-hmm. pruning the people that aren't following them back. Mm-hmm. And so they have 9,000 followers and they, they follow 9,000 people. And it's, it's meaningless because they're not getting the same kind of value out of this. And so anyway, I realized that the, the whole trying to balance things out uh, metric is ridiculous. So now I'm trying to figure out new ways to figure out value that, that's based more on um, genuine connections and also uh, one one feature. It's there's only a few features implemented, but there's one feature that uh, will show you people uh, like your you, you your friend on Twitter. Uh, you can see who they follow that you don't, and maybe you'd like to meet those people. And it's kind of like a recommend a friend type of. That used feature. to be at replies. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, of the days of that replies. All right, what are you most looking forward to for the duration of this conference? Well, I think I missed the thing that I actually wanted to see. I want, wanted to see the, the parrot talk this morning. Uh, not the parrot <laughs> talk, which I got to hear the parrot talk. But, uh, and that kind of bummed me out because uh, I was so exhausted from doing the talk yesterday that uh, I didn't get up until about 8 this morning, so I didn't make it down here. And uh, now it's uh, kind of like Marcus was saying, getting out and meeting people and uh, probably pop in on a couple of different talks just to get a little sense of what's going on. So. All right. Well, I'm going to let you get to it, but thank okay. you so much for coming back. I should note that uh, we had them scheduled yesterday before we found out that we were going to be able to live stream some of the talks. So it was really nice of both of you guys to come back in today. We really appreciate it. No problem. All right. Thank you All right. so much. Thank you.